Hey everyone, Cadams Tech here. So in today's video, I wanted to discuss my first ever project as a junior software engineer. But first, if you're new to my channel, my name is Christopher Adams. I am a senior full stack software engineer in the Tampa area. Uh, my mission for this video is to teach you all something. And if you feel like you've gotten any value out of it, remember to like and subscribe, share this video with anyone that you know is interested in learning development. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so the first ever project I was assigned was when my uncle approached me and he said, hey, I need a website for my lawn maintenance business, right? Um, at the time, I only knew HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, the basics of the front end, and I would put together some really ugly looking sites from scratch, writing all custom code. Um, I had thousands of lines of custom CSS that I would write to respond to different breakpoints um, for different screen sizes. I wrote these custom media queries um, and then I wrote some HTML from scratch. I wrote a lot of vanilla JavaScript, so tons of files with all this tons of JavaScript code. Um, and I would learn to manipulate the DOM. So I do simple things like, hey, if I hover over this text, change it a different color, make it larger, just do stuff like that, which is now super easy to do in CSS. But at the time it was more like, hey, it's okay to hook into CSS with JavaScript. So I, I never touched any backend code at all, never wrote anything on the server, right? But what my uncle wanted was a lawn maintenance page that had all of his information, had some images, so it was a lot of static stuff. But he also wanted the ability to have a blog post, right? So he wanted to be able to create blog posts, edit blog posts, delete po blog posts, like all the basic CRUD operations, right? So I knew that this would require an admin area. So being that I wrote everything from scratch at the time, I was like, hey, I'm just going to build this all from scratch. I was just so focused on html css and javascript and getting the basics down and getting the fundamentals down that i didn't really look at frameworks and libraries and stuff at the time so i already knew javascript and i knew some python but i was more comfortable with javascript because i used it on the web and i've never used python on the web so i heard about this platform called node and this was around seven years ago so i heard this platform called node and i knew you could write javascript on the server with it and everyone was talking about Node too in my area. So I was like, okay, I think I'm gonna roll with Node. And then also I used MongoDB for the database at the time. These days I use Postgres personally, but there's there's use cases for when MongoDB would be good. But at the time, Node and Mongo. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript from scratch on the front end. So what did I do? Well, first I started off building the front end for it. I was trying to make up different designs. And then I said, hey, let me get some images from you of the different sections for this for the site he provided me with images and then i used them on his site um, wrote some text on the site had played around with different layouts um, and then i showed this to him hey what do you think of this and then he's like it's, it looks good it looks good so I would, I would play around with the design for a bit on the front end but then it came time to the more daunting task um, writing some server-side code having to create records having to delete records having to edit records this is unfamiliar and uncharted territory for me. Um, so what I did was I learned as I went. I learned as I went along. Hey, I wonder how you can insert a record. Hey, I wonder how I can pull a record out of the database and display it on this page. In these cases, in this case, the records were blog posts. Hey, I wonder how you can reference an image link within the database table within a field. So that way, when the record's pulled for the post, I can show the image and the text. Um, just figuring out all of these little things. Tutorials helped, so I did some online tutorials. Also, I was networking a lot, so I was going to developer-related meetups at the time when I was a junior. So I made friends with people, and a lot of my friends would help me out with things. They would look at my code and they'll say, oh yeah, I think you just need to change this line here and do that. So they were, they were more experienced than me. Very, very helpful to have them in my life. And yeah, basically, I hammered it on uh, every single day and I worked on it for a few months. Uh, I think it was probably like a couple months, maybe like two months. And then I completed the project. You know, my uncle was able to log into his, his admin area, create blog, po blog posts, edit blog posts, delete blog posts. Um, and then also he had information on his web page. Another thing I had to learn at the time was registering a domain because he, he wasn't going to do any of this. So I had to figure it out. I had to register a domain. I had to deploy the app. So there's a lot of little things involved. You have to learn how to communicate with clients. Even though this is my uncle, you still have to press them for things. Hey, I need these images. Can you get me some images? Hey, I need uh, I need some text from, for you for each of these sections. What should I put? 
uh, for, about your services, things like that. A lot of back and forth in emails, a lot of phone calls. So you have to document that time. But at the end of the day, finished the site, it was fully responsive. I was proud of it. I was happy that I got it done. Um, and I ended up making a little bit of money from it too. So that was cool. But another good thing from this first project, right? This first thing I was ever assigned as a junior software engineer um, was that I got to use it during the interview process for my first actual official job working at a, at a workplace. So during the interview process, what I did was I actually brought my backpack along, had my laptop in it, dressed really nice, you know, just at the time I was really wanting to dress to impress. So I had the long sleeve uh, button down, typical interview stuff with the leather shoes and things like that. So I was really trying to dress to impress, brought my backpack along with my laptop and I made sure I had that project up and running to showcase. So typical interview process, this was the first interview. Uh, I spoke to people, hey, got a feel for the company. And then when it was time, I said, hey, yeah, actually I do have a project that I can show you if you're interested in looking at it. And he was like, yeah, sure, I'll take a look at it. So I said, hey, I built this for a client. Let me show you the functionality of it. Let me walk you through some of the code. Uh, so then I walked him through some of the code. I'm really proud of this portion of it. Um, see how I try to keep these functions clean um, and small and single responsibility. So basically it gives you an excuse to show some portions of the project and the features that you built that you're proud of. This is something that will help you stand out too during the interview process. So suffice it to say, he was impressed. I ended up getting the job later on. Yes, this task was really daunting, getting assigned this project. It was really daunting to me. I was nervous, I was scared. What if I let myself down? What if I let my uncle down because I can't complete this project? You know, I hope I'm good enough. I hope I can figure it out. All kinds of thoughts went through my head. But I pushed forward, you know, tackle, I tackled it, I didn't tackle it, but I tackled it piece by piece, one small section at a time, and I conquered it, I conquered it. Because if I looked at the big project itself, it wasn't a big project, but, but at the time, to me, it was bigger because it was the biggest thing I've ever worked on. But if I just look at the overall project itself, it's very overwhelming. It was very, very overwhelming. It's like, man, I don't know if I can actually complete this. This is crazy. But if you break it up and chunk it into bits, it's so you can breathe easy. You can actually see yourself conquering and completing tasks and getting just that much closer. So this very story is one of the reasons that in a lot of my videos I say, hey, you should ask a friend or family member if they would like an app or a web app and build it for them. Don't take on anything too big, but try and make it small and reasonable. And when you're a junior just learning, try and pace yourself. Try to just keep it small so you can complete it, so you can gain traction. So that's the story of my first ever project assigned to me as a junior software engineer. I hope you all have found this useful. I have a lot more content coming out soon. Remember to like and subscribe to share this with anyone that you know is interested in learning development. Until next time, see you all.